Hey guys, welcome back to the MATLAB environment again. And today we are going to talk about the naming conventions inside of MATLAB and some styling guides. And as always, you can find the M file in the GitHub repository. And I've put a link inside of the M file that you can see here, where you can find a PDF that explains the styling guides in a little bit more detail and goes into depth when it comes to other naming conventions besides those I will mention today. So let's start with section one, which is naming variables. And often you see beginners write something like A equals B times C, which is not very meaningful. Also when it comes to simulations and you call these runs like run one, run two, and so on, it's not very meaningful. So in order to make it meaningful, you should give the variable meaningful names, which is for instance here force. You can write that of course with a lowercase and then say equals mass times acceleration, which is very meaningful. And the one who is reading the code immediately knows what you are talking about. Some side information. So when we say something like monthly income and then equals a specific number, this type of writing where it starts with a small letter and then continues with a new word, starting with a uppercase, this is called lower camel case. And this is common practice in Java or basic. And I've put the information just right as a comment. And in the next line, we can see the upper camel case, also known as the Pascal case. And there we start with an upper case, as you can see here, so the T's uppercase. And then every new word starts with an uppercase as well. So this is called Pascal case. Now we will talk about number of objects, which is quite straightforward. If you have several numbers of objects, you can name them n, you put an n for the numbers, and then the name of the object you want to specify, in this case files. In the next line it's the same with vectors, you say number of vectors is 50, and here we also use the lower camel case. So let's say we want to use this for for loop, we use the i, so i files, i folders, i companies, and here as an example for i file from i to number of files and then you write your code in between the for loop and then end the for loop. Also straightforward. And now an important and very common mistake. It's about negation and the negation operator. So here we say okay is not legit and then we say not the not operator so not so we take the negation of the is not legit. So this is a double negation which could be misunderstood very often and might lead to confusion. What we do instead is we say this is legit, we define is legit and then just take the negation operator in front of is legit if we want to use the negation. As for constants and global variables which we shouldn't use that often, we can say that constants are always in uppercase, so max number files and then separate the words with an underscore. Or for instance here color code red if you have only one color code red and that is not changing. But if you're working with different colors of red and let's say you work with shades of red in plots, uh, I would not use uh, the constant uh, definition but maybe just a variable definition. As for functions, it's very straightforward, it's a lowercase, so you say functions called pro probably average or let's say compute area. So this is also very easy. And as for Boolean values, we can use the prefix is and we ask ourselves, for instance, is cheap and then we say it's true or it's false as same as with is legit and so on. So this what we put in front of our object is often called a prefix. So just in case you wonder what a prefix is. And as I mentioned, you can find the styling guide here. So feel free to copy and paste the link in your browser and you can find some other naming conventions about MATLAB. So this was the video on how to name specific variables, constants, as well as functions, etc. In the next video, I'm going to show you, finally, how to work with vectors. The question is why I didn't do this earlier. And the answer is that the vector section, as well as the matrices section and the plot section, 
will include plenty of videos. So what I will do is start with uh, principles like arithmetic for vectors and the topic of vectors will have several sub videos. That means we're going to cover indices, how to index vectors, how to create sub vectors, how to call indices from within a vector and we do much more. And to make sure that the videos aren't too long, I thought about like creating sub videos. If you have any questions, comments or thoughts on this particular topic, feel free to comment down below and I will sure, make sure to include them in the vectors video section. I would say uh, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, make sure to contact me on social media. And I would say, as always, make sure to keep engineering your mind and see you in the next one. Peace.